Hear about Skippy and the new kid? What new kid? Nightcook. What's his name? That got mugged. No. What happened? Well, you know, this new kid, he's on the beach. Yeah. And how it happened, he was in East Chicago after the last Pedro yeah. last week and brought all he could. And he's making a buzz with a CSO in his pocket and flashing that wad every chance he gets. Oh, boy. Why does the kid know? Hey, what do they know at that age? No offense. Yeah. So, as I understand it, this slut comes on to him. He takes her outside the bar, outside they go, bippity-boppity-boo, hoping that would improve the evening. Wouldn't it just? Things go all right. But that was not the thing of it. He makes his move, and he gets him off. By the slut? Yeah. I mean, he had a few, so he wasn't in any shape. Anyway, she takes his wad and his Z-card. Oh, not a Z-card. Yep, and his gate pass. And he didn't even get laid, did he? Fuck no, she rolled him first. Then she left. Man. So he stumbles back to the gate. He's drunk, sobbing. Nothing, nothing to be ashamed of. The guards won't let him in. I mean, he's bleeding and dirty. You, you didn't tell me he was bleeding. But that's understood. So go on. And dirty, and no identification. So of course they won't let him in. Bastards. Eh? Well, they're just, they're just doing their job. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Very nice guys, actually. I suppose. And so, uh, where, where, where was I? Uh, the part where they won't let him in. And the guards won't let him in. But, uh, what's his name? Guy about 40 or so. You know him. I'm new. Well, anyway, watch his name happens to be coming through. And of course, he recognizes. Watch his name. Yeah. So, what happened? How are you? All that shit. And the guy explains to him how they can't let the guy in. And the guy vouches right up for him. Well, he's a good man, huh? And they still won't let him through. Yeah. So how he gets in, yeah. he waits until these guys are looking any other way. I don't know, and the secretary of train, I don't know. And he walks right through the main gate. Bunch of assholes, huh? Oh, I don't know. So what happened with Skippy? You know Skippy? No. The first mate. Oh, yeah. So what happened with him is this. The poor slob makes it back to the fucking boat. He's drunk and bleeding and broke right. He gets to the gangway. The second is on the deck supervising boat loading. Right. He's talking on a box with Skippy, the first mate, who's up on the bridge. Now, Skippy, he sees this poor thing trumping up the pier, and he says to Collins, the second. Collins, we got passengers this trip. Get that man below and tell him to stay there till he's sober. Although Skippy is a hell of a nice guy, he's the oldest first mate on the lakes. Did you know that? No. Yeah, he was a master once. I don't know who for, but that's why they call him Skippy. Uh -huh. I heard that. I don't actually know it, but that's why they call him Skippy. So anyway, Collins collars the slob and tells him to get below. Who says so? The first says so, says Collins. So, Gugliami, Gugini, something like that. What? Uh, the guy's name. So whatever, Gugliani, What's his name says, tell the first to go fuck himself. So as God would have it, at that precise moment, the box rings, and it's Skippy wanting to talk to Collins. Collins, what's holding up the number three hold? I'm talking to Gulami, Collins says. What the old pirate fuck does he have to say that's so important? He's telling me that I should tell you to go fuck yourself, says Collins. So Skippy, who's bandied enough words at this point, says, Collins, throw that man in the canal and get 
Freehold the fuck off, Loaded! Yes, sir! Which I happen to be working on too at the time. So? So? What? So did he throw him in the canal? I don't know. I was down below. I heard this. And where's the guy now? What am I, a mind reader? On the beach somewhere. He lost his job. Up in East Chicago, I guess. Poor son of a bitch. Oh, I don't know. Sight, eh? Yo, Joe! Stan. You pick me up them razor blades? Oh, shit, I fucking forgot. I'm sorry. Fucking forgot? You fucking forgot? Memory is a terrible thing, isn't it? I hope to tell you. What? Are you supposed to salute the, uh, the... Don't worry about it. Attention all hands. Please remember company policy on alcohol is zero tolerance. Boy, was I drunk last night. I'm still drunk. That wine. Drink wine, it dehydrates you. When you drink water the next morning, it activates the alcohol. I'm so hungover, I can't see. Can't see? I can't even talk. I can't even fucking think straight. You couldn't think straight last night. I was drunk last night. You're still drunk. Yeah. No good, man. Yeah. No damn good. Sure not. No fucking good. What? Drinking? Drinking, life, women, the boat. No good. It's not that bad. No fucking good. You've been drinking? Drinking? Don't talk to me about drinking. What the hell did it ever get me? Drinking? I was drinking before you were wiping your own ass. Beer? I drunk more beer in my time than I can remember. I could tick off my life in beer caps. Bottles, cans, pop tops, screw tops, bottles. Every man on this ship had his own opener. I remember. Around the neck. Holy Mary. Don't tell me about beer, Joe. Please don't tell me about beer. I drunk beer. Wine. Ah, wine. Used to drink it with every meal. White, cherry, you need a taste for wine. I got one. Domestic and imported. Love the stuff. Red and white, I've drunk it. Wine with my food. Cigarettes smoldering and chilled wine. Warm spice wine, sweet cherry wine. I know wine, Joe. What about liqueurs? What about them? Yeah. For faggots, but booze. Ooh, scotch and rye. Drink bourbon by the fifth. When I lived at home, drink? My father could drink. My father could too. I say that man could put it away. A fifth a day and more, Joe, and more. My father too. He loved the stuff. Killed him. My father. My father drink it by the fifth. He never lacked for booze, that man. That's one thing I can say for him. Yeah. Nothing too good for him. Yeah. The old bastard drinks sterno. He didn't give a shit. I know. That man could drink. How about your mother? She could drink, too. My mother couldn't drink. No? The old man said it was bad for her. Women, what do they know of booze? They can't drink. Nothing. You ever know a woman that could drink? Yeah. What do they know? Girl from Duluth. They don't understand it. It's a man's thing, drinking. It's a curse and an elevation. Makes you an angel, a booze-ridden angel. Drinking. I know my alcohol boil. 
I know it, and you know I know it. And I know it. I'll take you below. I gotta go on watch. Domestic and imported. Come on, Steve. Any way you call it. I gotta go on watch. Mixed drinks, I know my mixed drinks. You name one, I know it. Mixed drinks. Manhattan. I know it. Come on, Stan. Ah, leave me alone. Come on, I gotta go on watch. Well, go on watch, you fucking Polak. Who's a Polak? Trust the Polak to go on watch when I'm pissed. I'll take you down to the Dunnage room and get you some coffee. Don't want any coffee, want to go to sleep. Well, let's go then. I want to sleep by myself. OK, Stan, let's get you off your feet. Off a deck? Sure. And who are you to tell me to get off a deck of a ship we both happen to be on? Come on, goddammit. Getting mad, huh? Stash. Getting a trifle warm? Aren't you getting warm? All right, Fucking Stan. Fucking no-class Polak. Can't oh. even hold your liquor. Maybe not, but I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you one I'll thing. I'll tell you one thing. I'm going for coffee. I'll tell you one thing, you son of a bitch. Yeah. Let go. Mr. Collins. Skippy wants a sandwich. Mr. Collins, look, I just came on. I ain't on yet. You ain't on yet? No. Well, get him a sandwich, will you? Mr. Take your second. I, uh, but, uh... You been drinking? No, sir. Can we speed this up at all? Get him a sandwich, will you? It's an act of Christian charity. What happened to the night man? He got mugged. Really? By who? How the fuck should I know? Would you get him a fucking sandwich, please? What do I need, a law degree? You got a cigarette? <sighs> Thank you, sir. Hot. Can we speed this up at all? He'll be out by about two. You think? Two, three. How's it on the beach? Oh, yeah. Same old, huh? Yeah. Same old. Any chance something to eat? Lost the night cook. Oh, yeah. I've heard about that. Cup of coffee. Welcome to it. Bitch in here. Yeah. Cooler on the dock. Yeah, well, it's not enclosed out there. What? Say again? What did Skippy want? Egg on white bread. When's the next trip? Where is it? Arthur? Duluth. Duluth? Oh, it's cool up there. Oh, yeah. It's like a fucking furnace in here. Yeah. <sighs> you, uh, shipping a boat this trip? Yes. Well, don't be where they're going to be seeing you. You don't want to start to work. You think we're going to make it out of here by two? You see any guys on break up there? No, I didn't notice. Huh? I was thinking about my sandwich. Mr. Collins, we're yeah. going to get a new night man or what? Huh? Night man. Yeah, yeah, sure. Crunder said we'll have him this trip. Well, that's good, because, you know, I don't want to be making sandwiches all the way to Canada, if you know what I mean. Yeah. I, not that I mind it, but, uh, you know, I just fucking hate making sandwiches for other people to eat. Yeah. Wrap it in wax paper, will you? Yeah, sure. And, uh, make sure you get those boats clean today, huh? Right as rain. Glad to hear you say that. Holes. That's right. Fuck off on your fire and evacuation. Your ass is going to be in a big sling when we have to drill for the Coast Guard. You! Get over here! Yeah, yes, sir. You know what that is? Uh, no, sir. It's empty, son. Empty. You know what belongs there? Uh, I, I, uh... An axe, boy. An axe. What's your number? Uh, what number, sir? F and E. F and E, boy. I, I don't know what that means, sir. Fire. Fire and evacuation. I, I don't think I have one, sir. How long have you been on this ship? About a half hour, sir. Nobody likes a smart ass. Nobody likes a smart ass. No one. You've been on this ship a short time? Say so. Have you got that? Yes, sir. Know who I am? Uh, no, sir. Yeah? Well, check out your fire and evacuation number, for God's sakes, will you? Your F and E number, will you? Yes, sir. The, the, who do I check it out with, sir? I do not know. That's Joe Litko. You know him? I can find him, sir. Oh, good for you. Well, find him. 
And listen hard. Yes, sir. Bunch of children! Bunch of children. Uh, protected world. Different world. Different world. Different time. Different men. No help for it. Where's my sandwich? Litko's getting it. He's not in the Stewart's. Where's the night coat? He got mugged. He's in the hospital. What's the number in Stewart's? Two, three. Call for me on that sandwich. Stewards, Collins calling on that sandwich for Skippy. Well, who is there? Where's Litko? Well, get him. This is Collins, sec. They hung up. There's Litko. Litko, go and pick up the deck phone. No, don't come here. Pick up the phone. Boat's becoming a bureaucracy. Tell me about it. Uh uh uh. Bridge, Collins. Yeah. Look, what the fuck happened to Skippy's sandwich? On Skippy's egg sandwich? Well, as I told you, Litko, he got mugged. Okay. Yeah. He did. Yeah. New kid showed up. Night cook. Hook him. Forget Litko. Litko, forget it. What do you want this afternoon? The lifeboats? Yeah. Go on and do the boats. Oh, no. Yeah. No. Forget it. What's he doing down there? Reading. Uh, what are you reading? I don't know. Let's see if you can find out, would you? <sighs> Who was the most grotesque broad you ever fucked? I'd have to think about that. I'd like to know. Do it in here, sir. Do you know what this space is? Uh, no, sir. You the new man? Uh, I guess so, yeah. You're gonna be the new night man, night cook. You ever cooked before? N no, a little bit. We're gonna book you night man. What's your name? Katzman. Dale Katzman. All right, we're gonna book you. Then you're off till 10 p.m. tonight. You work 10 till 6.30, straight shift, half hour for lunch. Your work should take about four or five hours. This is the officer's mess. You know what that means? Officers eat here. You will be coming in here to clean. Your duties will include cooking and cleaning. Get that. Hello, kitchen. What do you think we call the kitchen on a boat? Uh, uh, wait a minute. He wants to mate? Give me that. Collins. Yo. They're off. He got mugged. We got one. What kind? Fuck you. OK. You know how to make a sandwich? Yes, sir. Good. Make one for Skippy, the first mate and then make one for the fireman. Right, uh, what, what kind? For the first, an egg. For the fireman, how the fuck should I know? Make him an egg, all right? Sure, good. Uh
now they start getting really blind. My mother was blind. And could Guglielmi spare some change, you know, 20 for the kids to sell for the groceries? Yeah. And the whole time, she's drinking his room with Coke and lime. Coke and lime? That's what I heard. So where they drink it in Italy? You've never been to Italy. How the fuck do you know? Fuck. How the everlasting cocksucking fuck do you know I never been to Italy? Don't do shit all day. Tells me where I never been. So then I heard she'd have a drink. Yeah. He'd have a drink. Yeah. Next thing you know, Guglielmi gets up, he's knocking over tables, he's staggering around like he's ready to die. Meanwhile, she's still walking a straight line. Uh huh. Hey, I wonder what's the matter with Joe. Why do you say there's something the matter with Joe? Well, I don't know. I just. You Who know, the hell are you? What, I, I 20 was... some years on a boat watching a little dial all of a sudden you want to know what's wrong with Joe hey look it I was just, just saying listen to me the man's done more shit in his life than you'll ever forget I only just said... remember that mr. wise ass he'd been to more places than you ever been never been to Italy what kind of wop loving bullshit is that hey, I'm fucking Italian don't talk to me stick hi hi how are you? Fine. In the sense that I feel like shit. Been to Italy. Uh, you want a sandwich? Yeah. You the night man? Yes. Do you like egg? I don't give a fuck. What do you do down here? Down here? I read. How can you read and do your job? I'm not answerable to you. I'm answerable to the chief. I was just asking. Yeah, I do my job, OK? No, I know that. I do my job, I keep busy, and I read a bit. It doesn't get in your way, the, the reading? No. I mean, I got to watch the two gauges. Four, actually, you got the two main, those are the two you got to watch, and then the two auxiliary. Uh -huh. But the two main, those are the two you want to watch, because if they go... <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If that main, if she goes, if she goes red line, you are fucking fucked. And then you, you, you uh, switch oh, over I'm to not, the auxiliary? I don't do nothing. I don't touch a thing. I don't do a goddamn thing. I shut down whichever blows, the larboard or the starboard, and then I call the bridge, and then I call in the chief in that order. That's what I do. And then you watch the auxiliary? Nothing to watch. Engine shut down, gauges is dead. What's the point of having an auxiliary gauge? For a standby. You gotta have a standby. You don't got a standby with that automatic off feed? <laughs> Let me tell you something. You don't have a standby and that main goes, you are fucking fucked. And uh, you keep an eye on him, huh? What do you mean I keep an eye on him? I'm watching him constantly. That's my job. I see that. Of course, I read a bit. I mean, come on, when you get right down to it, what is there to do? You gotta watch two gauges, four hours a clip. I mean, that's eight hours a day watching two gauges. If you didn't read or do something, Jesus, you'd go insane. Where you going? Hey. People with money want a piece of everything. You gotta have a piece of everything. Now, how different is that than bad Prince John? Who is that? Who? Prince John. Who is that? Bad Prince John? Yeah. Who is that? Who is that? Yeah. Who is that? Yeah. The sucker fucked up Robin Hood. Prince John? Yeah. Bad Prince John? Yeah. Bad Prince John. Yeah. He fucked up Robin Hood? Yeah. Hey, fuck. The past is the past. What are you gonna do? Ruin your life about it? You the new man? Yeah. 
Are you hot? Huh? Are you hot? Oh, yeah. I'll put a scoop out the porthole. What's your name? Katzman. Dale Katzman. Katzman? Yeah. Jewish, huh? Yeah. No offense. Well, Dale, coming on like this out of nowhere, you got a thing or two to find out. Now, the main thing about the boats, other than their primary importance in the steel industry, is you don't get any pussy. You got that? Yeah. Except when we tie up. This is important to know because it precludes your whole life on the boats. This is why everyone says fuck all the time. Huh? Why? Well, they say fuck in direct proportion to how bored they are, huh? Yeah. Now, from the prospect of not getting any, you know about sex? I know it all. I see you mean that facetiously. <laughs> yeah. Because there sure is a hell of a lot to find out. I'm not gonna offend you, am I? Uh, I don't know. Okay. You know, I didn't find out about sex until late in life, judging from my age of puberty. You gotta go and watch? No, not until 10. Which came quite early. Who can say why, huh? Yeah. Around date. What did I know then, right? Stroke books, jacking off with a few choice friends. Am I right? Yeah, you're right. For years, until I'm in high school, and I fall for this girl. Same old story, right? She's beautiful, she's smart, and I dig her. I take her out. So times are different then. This was a few years ago. And after the movies, we're dry humping in the living room. The father's asleep upstairs. The mother's dead. Same old story, right? And all of a sudden, the whole thing becomes clear to me. I mean, like, in a flash, all this horseshit about the universe becomes clear to me, and I perceive meaning in life. I want to fuck. I want to stick it inside her. Screw dry humping. I want to get it wet. I want to become one with the ages of men and women before me down into eternity and goo in the muck from whence we sprung. You know what I mean? Huh? I know. And I'm on fire. And I'm going, ooh, ah, like that. And I'm trying to undo her berserk. This girl had tits. Of course, nowadays, I don't even bother anymore. You know what I say? You do what I say. The joy is gone, you know? So anyway, we're still humping and bumping, and I'm trying to undo the bazaar. And my knee, as if it had a mind of its own, and never a word spoken, had inserted itself between her legs, and she's gyrating like crazy and saying, what do you think she's saying? I love you. Uh, I love you? No, she's saying. Oh, Fred, please don't. So, like a dope, I don't. Huh? We look sheepish for a, a minute. She gets all straightened out and says she's had a wonderful time, Freddy. And out I go. So, to make a long story short, after this happens another time, two times, I begin to get wise. Something is not as it should be. Also, I couldn't walk in the morning. But my uncle, who is over, is conversing with me one evening. And as men will do, we start talking about sex. He tells a story. I tell my story. This takes him aback. What? He says. The way to get laid is to treat him like shit. Now, you just stop for a moment and think on that. You heard it before. You'll hear it again. But there's more to it than meets the eye. Listen. The way to get laid is to treat him like shit. Truer words were never spoken. And this has been tested by better men than you or I. So I thought it out of it and decided to put it into action. I'm going out with Janice. Movies, walk home, couch, dry humping. No, I hit her in the mouth. Now, I don't mean slap, Dale. I mean hit. I fucking pasted her. She don't know nothing. She is so surprised, she don't even bleed. Not a word did I speak, but off with her dress, her panties, and my pants. I didn't wear any underwear. A lot of women find that attractive. Did you know that? No. Well, I've only since found that out. So anyway, smack them, spread the old chops, and I hump the shit out of her. And she's yelling, oh, don't, oh, yes, oh, don't, oh, yes, Freddy, oh, it's so good, oh, shit, zingo. So I get dressed, and she's laying on the couch, 
spent. I mean spent and wet and everything. Uh, she looked beautiful. And I go over to the door. Not another word out of you, cunt. Ever. What about her father? He was a boiler maker. So after that, it's hand jobs in the assembly hall, fucking under the bleachers, the whole thing, man. She's buying presents and asking me to the prom. I'd left school. And to this day, I mean to this day, I want a piece. I call her and tell her. Friend. Not ask her. How tell Dave. Who's that? I tell her where and when, and she's there. And she's married. Is that sweet Fred? So remember, I know, I know, I was a shy kid too, but you gotta remember, the way to a woman's cunt is right through the cunt. That's the only way. Fish day? Uh-huh. Let's get something to eat, huh? You know, I'm gonna get a jump on this and uh, make up the first cabin. Okay. See you later. Yes, sir. Take it out. You have a safe and pleasant journey. Thank you. Take care. W.A.Y. Chicago. W.A.Y. Chicago. This is the Seaway Queen, ready for departure. many things in this world, Mr. Collins, the true meaning of which we will never know. I knew a man who was a mason. Uh-huh. You know what he told me? No. Would you like to know? Yes. Poor Guglielmi, mug. Yeah, poor son of a bitch. In East Chicago, that's a lousy town. Buy some whore, no less. Drug the shit out of him. Met him in a bar, who knows? He was a fanatic, you know. I knew him, not overly well, but I knew him. He was a gambling degenerate, played the ponies. How did he do? I don't know. But I had my suspicions he gave it all away, so who knows, maybe the moth got him. I mean, somebody got him. Maybe the whore, huh? So maybe it was the Murphy man. But I don't think so. It looks like the outfit. Not that they care for the few C's they took, but you know how they are. You can't get behind when you're into them. That's it, am I right? No, it doesn't figure unless it was the outfit. Ah, or some freak occurrence. It was probably some outfit guys got him. Assuming he was into them. Doesn't look like he just got rolled. They beat the living fuck out of him. Left him for dead, huh? Can you feature it? Flies in his face. Fucking ears stuck to the sidewalk with blood. They ruptured a man. He'll never perform again. They put the boots to him. 
left him for dead. No, it doesn't figure. The only way it adds up, if it was the outfit. A very property-oriented group. Poor sucker. East Chicago bottle opener. The Luger was the enlisted man's sidearm, and the Walther were the officers. Are you sure? I was there, my friend. I was there. So, what was the Walther Luger? There was no such thing. Oh, I read it. Where? In some book on the war. And you were lied to. There was no such thing, believe me. No. I would tell you if it were the case. I would, if it were the case. It's a tough life. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I was married once. Yeah? Yeah. I'm still married to my second wife. You got divorced, huh? Well, why do you say that? You just said you were married to your second wife. Oh, yeah. I got divorced from my first. Sorry, I mean, <clears throat> she could have died. You could have been a widower. It's too late now. You pay any alimony? Yeah. Oh, shit, did I pay? I was doing extra deck work and running to the track so that woman could fuck off and pamper the kids. How many kids you got? Just one, actually. I don't know why I said kids. They live with their mother, huh? Yeah. Actually, there's just one kid, uh, Clarice. She's the kid. The girl, huh? Yeah. She lives with her mother. You see her? Oh, yeah. What do you think? I just let her live with that cunt? Christ, I see her every chance I get. Her birthday, we go to the zoo, museum. <clears throat> she got married, my wife, ex. Well, shit, at least you don't have to pay that fucking alimony. Yeah, but doesn't she fuck me on the child support? Every fucking piece of toilet paper has got to come from Carson Beery's guts. What fucking kid spends $700 a month? What happens to $700 a month? I'll tell you. Denise X fucking Swaboda is what happens. Nothing's too good for the kid, but it takes a bite. What doesn't? That is the point, Joe. It's getting expensive just to live. Sure as shit. Or just to buy a pack of camels, it's getting so you have to go to the fucking bank. Used to be 26 cents a pack, Indiana. I remember it was 17 cents in Tennessee. You're not from there. Ah, we used to go there. Mm. Wish I never got started. I used to buy them from my old man. He used to say, hey, 
You're gonna smoke. Don't hide it. Smoke in my presence. So did you? Christ, no. He would have kicked the shit out of me. <laughs> it's too fucking expensive. You never should have got started. Fuck. It's going up. When's it gonna stop? I swear to God, I don't know. Well, I'll be selling syphilitic fucking apples to each other in a street corner. It's a fucking good one, eh? You know, it's, it's surprising what people will convince themselves is interesting. The company, guests come on for a trip and we're docked at Port Arthur, and they're up there on the boat deck, and for an hour, hour and a half, they're watching the crane lift the lids off the hole. Just watching it. And the dust is flying and it's hard to breathe, but they're just standing there. People got cameras, they're taking pictures of a crane lifting a lid. Now, what's so interesting about that? I'd like to know. You describe the situation to them. To any normal people, they wouldn't walk across the hall to watch it if the TV were broken. But there they are, guests of the company, standing on the boat deck, hours on end, watching the crane lift the lids off the hole. Maybe they see something I don't. Maybe I'm getting jaded. What are they looking at? Now, what are you looking at? You're looking at them. And that's perfectly correct. It's all a matter of perspective. Yes, sir. Look at the uh, wake off the fantail. Did I ever look at the wake? Yes. I'm sure that I have. Well, if you have, then you notice this. The wake diverges. Diverges, mind you. But the convergence of distance, huh? As you take two lines, and in the distance, they seem to converge. They do. And so the two effects. The wake itself diverging, and the illusion of the convergence produces this, an effect whereby the lines seem to parallel out to infinity. It's all a matter of perspective. Bless them all, bless them all. Bless the long and the short and the tall. Bless all the soldiers with all of their stripes. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mr. Collins. Yeah. Mr. Collins, how far is it to land out here? I don't know. About five miles. How long could a guy live out here, do you think? What? Huh? I mean, not if he was on an island or something or a boat. I mean, he was in the water. I mean, it's over your head. I don't really know, Joe. You planning a swim? Swim? Oh, a swim? Oh, I get you. No. I was just wondering, you know, in case, uh, God forbid, the ship went down and, uh, you know, lifeboats were all leaky or something. How long could a guy live out here? Joe. You can tell me. Don't worry about it, huh? Even if the boat sunk, you got your life jackets. They'd have a helicopter here in a half an hour. Oh, I wasn't worried. I just wonder, you know? Yeah, well, don't wonder. I guess the big problem wouldn't be the drowning as much as the boredom, huh? I knew a guy who ate a chair just because nobody stopped him. Was 
to you, Joe. All right, Mr. Collins. Steven Seagal is the strongest guy in 10 years. <laughs> you know what? You are truly an idiot. You could have said that in the dark, and I would have known it was you, because only you could make so stupid a statement. Steven Seagal has got to be the dumbest jagoff I can remember. Yeah, it's like you to say that. You know about it. I know when a guy is strong. And that's what Seagal is, strong, huh? Yeah. You know, you're right. I agree with you 100%. He is strong, Mr. Seagal. I can't think of anything that could be stronger than him, unless maybe a pile of shit. What do you know? Who do you like? Oh, I'll tell you. You want a real strong fella, a real type. I'd have to say Jerry Lewis. He could probably knock the shit out of this Seagal. Uh, you don't know nothing. You don't know a fucking champ when you're looking at him in the movies, for Christ's sake. This guy is stark. He's the best. He's the best, all right. Like jacking off is better than getting laid. This guy, Seagal, is the biggest jack off of all time. Yeah, I agree with you, Stan. I see your point. The man is not Stark. He's no fucking good. That's why he didn't take five fucking guys in that bar room using only one pool cue. I see your point. And Shirley Temple probably couldn't have taken those guys, I suppose. Oh, no. Shirley probably could have taken them. She could have disarmed them and probably shot that meat knife out of the guy's hand from 20 feet from the hip. Yeah, I see your point. And I suppose this guy could whip the shit out of Clint Eastwood, huh? Explain that to me, Fred, how Clint Eastwood is no match for this guy. Oh, well, No, explain it to me. If you want to get ridiculous about it. War! Or Lee Van Cleef. I'm sure he would have laid down and puked from fear when he seen this guy two blocks off. All I know is, like you say, any guy who fucks all night and drinks a shitload of champagne and can go out at five the next morning and rob a bank without a hitch, it's got to be no fucking good. I see your point. No fucking good? No, he's great. He only had the entire National Guard full of sidekicks, about 2,000 guys and an A-bomb to back him up. You really got to admire a stand-up guy like that. He didn't have no bomb. Pardon me? Hey, what is this bomb shit? You probably didn't see the movie, all you know. No, you're right. I probably didn't even see the movie. That's how come I don't know what a bust-out Steven Seagal is and what a complete loser you are to back him. I probably never did see the picture. In fact, I've probably never been to a movie in my life. I'm not standing on a boat. Your name isn't Fred, I suppose. And oh, yeah, you're probably not completely full of shit. Probably not. You idiot, what do you know? Trouble with this straight shift crap. Get up. Come up, street. What? I said that's a trouble with this straight shift crap. Come on. Get out of bed and come on up with us. I gotta sleep. What? How can you sleep in this heat? What are you gonna do? Come on. Joe, I gotta sleep. You can't. You can't sleep in this. If you can sleep in this shit, you are a drowsy motherfucker. Get up. So, some clothes? Sure. So where are you from? Chicago. Chicago. You came in on the boat? 
Seaway Queen. Seaway Queen? Huh. Harrison Steele, right? Joseph Chervetsky, 1939, he laid that keel 640 feet. Chervetsky Steele. Sold? Harrison Steele. 1950-something. Huh? Sure. Pretty good. <laughs> Nothing good about it. So, what do you need? Hmm? You need something. Uh, maybe. And I'm there, who knows why, just by accident. But you know something? I know that this voice is the same voice from that Gemeine Mamza that's been plaguing my daughter. And all he said, you look like a stalker. All he said was the number of a doctor or something, but I know, Schultz, I'm standing here right now, that this is the same Shagitz, that goonish, that cocksucker that's been making calls to her. How'd you know it was the same guy? Well, from the voice. What do I need, a program? I haul him from that phone booth, you know, and I stalk her been at Nisht, you know, trust me. Anyway, you finish. I take him from the booth, and I give him such a zet. I really, well, I give him a him, give him a... Give him a... Did you kill him? You need a pair of gloves. Did I kill him? <laughs> I don't know. And did the phone calls continue? That's the funny part. Not two days later. Fine day. Been up the street? Uh, yeah. Um, so we're, we're leaving on time, right? It all has been written in the mind of Allah. Okay, thanks. May I have your attention, please? Ships are now on board at 0900 Alpha. Repeat, 0900 Alpha. Time you get off. About 6 30. Hmm. Yeah. I hit the bridge before then. Yeah? Yeah, I hit it in about a half hour. Or about six. You made up the first cabin yet? Yep. I was up for it a little while ago. Give me a nice day. Huh? Think? Yeah. Well, be hot when we dock. You'll be hot by the time we hit the soup. You going up the street? Ah, I don't know. You gotta get some sleep first. You got some nice bars up there. Yeah? Yeah, oh, I know. Got some real bars. Sedate. I used to go up there. Go up drinking there. 
You off now? No, I don't go off until the eight o'clock come on. I don't go off till eight. You hungry? Man, yeah, a little. Want me to fix you something? No. Give me some pie, something. We got any pie left? Yeah, there should be some. You want something else to drink? A glass yeah. of milk? Or... Give me some coffee. You know, Dale, you go to school. Yeah. I'm in my second year, uh, grad school. You, you're starting your second year? You finish one year? Yeah, well, I'll be starting my second year when I go back in the fall. Where do you go at? In Massachusetts, near Boston. What do you go all the way there for? Well, I don't know. I like it there. It's a good school. It's a nice area. Yeah, but they got some good schools over here, don't they? I mean, I'm sure it's a good place where you go, but uh, they have some good schools here. Loyola, Chicago University, some good schools here. Michigan. Yeah. No, they're good schools, but uh, I don't know. I like it in the East. It's nice there, huh? Yeah, really nice. Nice country. Hmm. What do you study? I mean, uh, what do you work at at school? I'm studying English, English literature. Yeah? That's a tough racket. I mean, writing. But, uh, but what? Are you gonna. Are you gonna teach? Teach English? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I might teach. Sure. I mean, uh, all I mean is it's a tough racket. You hit the bridge so. How long are you going to be staying on the boat? About? I don't know. Another month? Five weeks? Got to go back to your school, back east, huh? Yep, I'll leave to go back to school. You want a cup? No. Nah. Got to get back to your studies, back east. I used to go east. I worked out of Buffalo for a while. Used to ship forward out of Detroit, too. Forward boats. You ever ship salt? No. You? Never did. I always wanted to, though. It's a different life, you know? I've been working on the lakes, off and on, for 33 years. Don't seem like such a long time. How old are you, Dale? You don't mind my asking? No, I'm 23. I'll be 24 in uh, October. Yeah? Well, you're a young guy for such a... Well, you're not that young, but uh, you seem older. Yeah. Seemed like you wouldn't have been that young. Of course, it's not that young. I was working on the boats when I was your age. You know, Dad, you've got it made. You know that? You really got it made. What do you mean? Why, you got your whole life ahead of you. I mean, you're not a kid or anything. You're a man, you're a young man, but you've got it made. What are you talking about, Joe? You know what I'm saying. You're not an old man, Joe. What are you talking about? Oh, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to say it. Just want to let you know. So you understand. I mean, I've lived longer than you have. And, and, you know, at this stage, one can see a lot of things in their proper light. And you're a bright kid. Well, yeah, sometimes I don't think so. Well, what do you know, you know? I mean, I've lived a hell of a lot longer than you, and I want to tell you, you're going to be okay. You're a fine, good-looking kid, and, and you know what's happening. And you're okay. And you're a good worker. I don't mean that disrespectfully. I know. And I just want to tell you, sincerely, you have got it made.
Christ, it's gonna be hot today. It's gonna be a hell of a hot fucking day. Did you make up the first cabin today? Uh, before you came in. You don't have to take no shit from him, you know. No, I know. Seriously, we should raise the mackin on a couple of minutes. You going up on deck? No, I'm gonna finish up here. All right, well, then, all right, I'll see you. Let me know if you're going up the street. I will, Joe. We'll hit the bars. I'm going up on the boat deck. You get off soon, right? About a half hour. Oh. All right, well, take it easy. Get some rest. Can you sleep in this heat? Easy. I got to scoop out the porthole. Yeah, well, okay. Well, it's just that, you know, I, I have trouble sometimes. Get some rest. Don't work too hard. Fuck, no, I wouldn't. Some of these twisting and like a ballet until there's one left behind the bar. And all you can see, Stephen's got his back to the bar. And we think he thinks this guy is dead. And you see this guy take this cleaver off the bar and heft it over his head. And just as he's about to let go, Seagal whips around and fires. He carries this belly pistol, black as night, in his sleeve. In his fucking sleeve. He goes whomp like that. And the fucking thing slides down his sleeve into his fucking hand. And you see, the guy still got his hand up the throat. But all you see is this little bit of bloody handle. You see, Steven Seagal shot the fucking cleaver out of the guy's hand. Behind his back. 20, 30 feet with a two-inch belly pistol. Now, how stark is that? Very impressive. You're not just saying that. No. Good morning, Skip. Morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning to you, sir. What have we of interest from the deck this morning? Nothing to report, sir. Fine is kind. Pure blue-black with a black checkered grip and an eyelet on the butt you could use for a lanyard. It was an old gun, but it was in good shape. No scratches. Pure black like a good pair of boots, you know? Must have been re-blued. Or maybe you just never used it. You don't know. Use big shells, too. Powerful. You could tell by how big they were. It's a good way to tell. Now, I was in the Army, you know, overseas. Hawaii. No, the officers, they had, uh, they had pistols, they had automatics, you know, 45s, big, heavy guns, but uh, his gun, a revolver. I seen him. Shit, he used to come down here to clean it. He used to work down here for a while, and that's, that's why I don't understand how they ever took him, because as tough a guy as Guglielmi was, I don't know how they ever took him. They must have took him from behind or drugged him or something. No, I heard they might have drugged him. Bastards. Or he was drunk. Possible. Very possible. That is, that's the heat he used to drink. He used to drink on the ship. Hey, who doesn't? Not him. Not him for sure. He'd stagger around like an Indian after he had a few. Like a fucking Potawatomi he would. Yep. Yeah, that's probably what happened. Did he have his gun with him? Why would you hear? I didn't hear one way or the other. What I heard was that he had the gun with him when he went to the bar, but when they found him, yeah. he didn't have it on him. Huh. 
Huh. He was a mysterious fellow. Huh. He had a lot of gumption. I heard that. I didn't know. A lot of gall. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I hated that. I mean, what's he know? You know? Blind balls is all. Damn fool. Like to get killed crazy with a big gun like that. Maybe he didn't have it on. No, he had it. I think he had it by God. I saw him going off that day, and I says to myself, you know what? He looks like trouble today. He is just dripping trouble today. And I says to myself, I hope he's got his peace. I mean, for his sake, I hope he's got it. Yeah, whether he took it or not, man, they got him. Yeah, I know. Fucking cops. Yeah. But why do you say cops? Are you kidding? What that kid knew? What did he know? Things. He knew me. Things. Yeah. Sure in hell that kid, he, he let on like he didn't know. But see, I knew that he knew. I know when they know, I can see it. Huh? And he, he'd been around that kid, he was no dumb kid. The cops know that, they don't sit still. They know, they know. He was no cherry, that kid. He was no dumb kid. You know what I think? I think he was on the run, and I think they wanted him. Coast Guard wouldn't let him on the boats if he was wanted. I mean, they print you. You know that. Still, how could he get on? He had friends, okay? Friends. Politics, strengths. You don't know one half of what that kid knew. That kid was no cheap talk. Talk is cheap. You think it was the G, huh? I think what I think. That's all I know. Come on. That. One man is weak. <coughs> Many men are strong. What's that supposed to mean? It's a saying. I can tell it's a saying. What about? One second. W-A-Y, Chicago. This is the Seaway Queen. Over. Uh-huh. Right. Okay. This is the Seaway Queen out. Some joker in a party boat out, Manistique. What happened to him? Wife wants to know where he is. Where is he? Overdue since Tuesday. Uh, then he's probably dead. That's what the Coast Guard thinks. Well, why are they calling us now? I think she just called in. Well, she's been here over three days. Maybe she was getting her hair done. Party boats. The Minister of Navigation. In the front of the senses in the eye. I'm with you there. Don't play up to me, Collins. You say what you think. You're gonna fight it in this world. That's the way to gain a man's respect. I don't see lost two fingers in the winch. Which winch? Forward main. Who's Reynolds? Used to ship deck. When did he lost them? This was a couple of four or five years ago. Uh-huh. He got 3,600 bucks. But the company paid him? Yeah. Not counting workmen's comp and social security. He gets social security for fingers? I don't know, but not counting it. He got 3,600 bucks. That's 1,800 bucks a finger. The main winch, which fingers? The right hand, these two. <sighs> Fuck, he's crippled. Two fingers? Yeah, but the thumb. What about it for 3,600? How could he pick anything up? Use the other fucking hand. If they paid him $5 every time he wanted to pick something up just to use his left hand, he'd get 3,600 bucks for 720 times. Hey, that's not so much. I wouldn't do it. Well, he didn't do it on purpose. 
I wouldn't do it at all, even by accident. No amount of money. I think. You can't buy a finger, man. It's gone and that's it. Not for all the money in the world. Yeah, neither would I. Boy, did I get laid last night. One of the lads on the boat? By a woman, Freddy. A woman. You remember them? Soft things with a hole in the middle? I remember. You seem down. I am down. Why did they have to go and build a racetrack on the south side of Chicago? How much you lose? 700 bucks. Where'd you get 700 bucks? Around. Oh. You in trouble? No. You sure? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You tell me if you were. Yeah. Okay. You watch yourself. Thank you. Next post in 15 minutes. Next post is up your ass if you don't get to work. I'm gone. Explain it when we don't make schedule on this watch. I called ahead. They'll have the mail ready for us at the locks. Oh, I ain't talking about the mail, sir. I'm talking about the schedule. Schedule, yes. I'm talking about feather bedding. I'm talking about automation. I'm talking about, you know, when, uh, when you're in a situation with no comforts at all. When you're in a situation where there's no, no, no trappings of manhood. And that is the test of if you are a man. And what situation would that be? What situation would that be? War, for example. War. Simple syllable. War. sir. How are you? Fine. Yes, sir. You having a good time? Uh-huh. Yes, indeed. You want a tip? Sir? Want to know how to get marks off stainless steel? You ever think of a trick? A trick is something that you told it, and then you can do it. There's nothing to it. It's a trick. The trick gets marks off stainless steel. You clean it, then go over it a rag with boiling water. You remember I told you that. I will, sir. for doing a job, you trade your work for money, am I right? Why is that any less good than being a doctor, for example? That's one thing I never wanted to be. I wanted to be a lot of things when I was little. I wanted to be a ball player like everybody else. I wanted to be a cop. Nah, I was a kid no right? Can I tell you one thing I wanted to be? I know this is gonna sound peculiar, 
but uh, it was a pure desire on my part. One thing I wanted to be when I was little, I don't mean to be bragging now, just to be saying it. If you were there, you would have known it was pure desire on my part. I wanted to be a dancer. That's something I guard. Like, uh, you know, you guard the first time you got laid, or the girl you're in love with, or uh, winning a bike at the movies. Uh, well, maybe not that, but, you know, more like getting married or winning a medal in the war. I wanted to be a dancer, not tap. I mean, a real ballet dancer. I know they're all fags, but yeah, I didn't think about it. If I did not think about it, I, I mean, I didn't say, well, I want to be a dancer, but I do not want to be a fag. Yeah, you know, it wasn't important. I could see myself arriving at the theater late to Swan Lake at the Lyric Opera, wearing this coat with a old-fashioned collar, you know, in this winter. I'm entering the theater, this purple shirt, white tights, leading my girls. Yeah. Beautiful. Sweating, all my muscles are covered in sweat, you know? But it's clean, and my muscles all feel tight. Every fucking muscle in my body, hundreds of them, tight and working. I'm standing on stage straight, with this sort of expression on my face, waiting to catch this girl. Mm. It's about 15. It takes a hell of a lot of work to be a dancer. But a fucking dancer doesn't even care. Doesn't even have to be somebody because he is somebody. So much so, it's not important. You know what I mean? Did you ever try to... I don't want to get you offended by this. You don't have to answer this if you don't want. No, go ahead. Ah, what the fuck? If you're gonna talk, I mean, really. Why fuck around the bush, huh? Did you ever try to kill yourself? No. I did, one time. Um, uh, yeah, I, I should say I, perhaps I shouldn't say I tried to kill myself, meaning the gun didn't work, but I wanted to. Yeah. I had this gun when I lived over on the south side. I wanted a poker game. Yeah. Nah. I bought it off the bum boat in Duluth. Why lie? 40 bucks. It was a revolver. 32 revolver. Six shots, you know? How big a barrel? Mm. Like this. A couple inches. I never fired it. One time, coming back, I loaded the gun. I shot one shot off the fantail into the water. I didn't hit anything. I used to clean it. I got this kit in the mail. Patches and oil and gun slick and powder solvent and this fucking brush, you know? I seen him. Kept in my suitcase. One night in Gary, I had this apartment. I was cleaning the gun. And you know how you do pretending the cops are 
chasing me and doing fast draws in the mirror. And then I said, what are you doing? A grown man playing bang bang on some fucking dive in Gary, Indiana, 10 o'clock at night. And I laid down in front of the TV and I loaded the gun. Five chambers. You don't load the six in case you jiggle on your horse and you blow your foot off. And I put the end in my mouth. And I couldn't swallow. I felt my pulse start to beat. And my balls contract and pull up. Did you ever feel that? No. And I took it out of my mouth. I laid down on the bed on my back, looked at the ceiling. I stuck the gun under my chin, point at my brain. And after a while, I started feeling real stupid. I rolled over and I put my gun under my pillow. But I held on to it, you know. And I started it. You know, play with myself. You know what I mean? I know. Grown man. Isn't that something? Come by? Yes, sir. We get that report on uh... report on Googliami. We get that report on Googliami? Yes, sir. Raiders. That's fine. Get me something to eat. Yes, sir. Yo, Linko! Give me needs a sandwich! W-A-Y Chicago. W-A-Y Chicago. This is a Seaway Queen in port, ready to copy. Over. I don't give a fuck. The man lived on the sea. The man died on the sea. Gigliani? Yeah. He died on land. He died because of the sea. Because of the sea. Because of his trade. Do you understand? Yeah. Good. He died because of his desires. Yeah. Well, we all have them. You know him well? I know him very well, Dale. Very well. Yo, Joe, I'm telling yeah. my man about Giuliani. Yeah, they call the boat. We're going to pick him up on the dock. We're picking who up? What? Who are we picking up? Guigliani. We're picking up Guigliani? Yeah, he hitched a ride from Chicago. He hitched a ride from Chicago? Yeah. The fuck's he been? Skippy said he said his aunt died, but he thinks the guy overslept. Who overslept? Guigliani.
You overslept all summer? It's a long story. Son of a bitch. I knew he'd show up. Who? None of your fucking business. You want a cup of coffee? Yeah, I'll have one, too. Anybody else? Dale, Dale, give me a cup of tea. Faggot. Who do you have to fuck to get a sandwich in this place? I'm out of here. Where's he going? Signing off. Well, you got to meet him at the gangway. That's right. No, you got to meet him at the gangway. I don't know. The whole fucking thing is an exercise trying to keep straight two, three concepts get you through until retirement, and I don't give a fuck. Gear it down slow enough, watch that thing move around, and what do you got? Pretty pictures. Don't mean nothing more. Wind blowing the sand, Indiana dunes. You follow me? No. What's that supposed to mean? Hey, you want to go up street tonight? Did you hear what happened with Giuliani? <laughs> Could you get your fucking back into it? Because didn't they tell you? They cut off welfare, you fucking pencil necks. <laughs> learn to trade, learn to steal or something. Trade wheat futures. Because I'm going to have your asses off this job. You don't get this boat off loaded by the end of the shift. You have to meet him at the gangway. Hey, you want to go up street tonight? Twist my arm. Thanks, Dan. Thanks a lot. Give him hell. Thank you, Fred. Thanks a lot. Take care, kids. Come back and visit. Sweethearts. The best one. <laughs> Thanks. Well, one of us. I thought you might like to have this. It's one of my favorite poems. Thank you very much, sir. Given to me the first time I shipped out. Very kind of you. Here you go, Skip. All right, kid. Yeah. See you around. All right, back to work. Let's get this thing off. Come on. Take those. All the best. Man.